The Fujifilm X-H1 is a powerhouse of a camera that I wish I'd found before buying the Sony a7 III. It is the hashtag, it seems like it is overkill for what I need, but the quality is so great that I'd be crazy to trade it in for something else that just may be disappointing, although all cameras have their quirks camera. The X-H1 has a 24 megapixel APS-C C-Trans CMOS 3 sensor. It has a three directional tilting 1.04 million dot touch LCD screen that can be used for focusing and touch to shoot. It shoots in 4K 24p and 4K 30p. Can shoot up to 120p, but in lesser resolutions, which isn't that bad if you ask me, it does the job. It takes two SD cards, both UHS-1 and UHS-2. It has a mini HDMI port for external monitoring and a mic jack. And with the grip, you get a headphone jack and a DC port for charging. It takes up to three batteries with the grip. Without the grip, it's only one. It has the standard Fuji dials on top of the camera with a top screen for viewing your camera settings, which can be customized. The X-H1 is a professional grade camera and it has some modes and settings that sets it apart from some of the newer cameras on the market. I love the versatility and functionality of this camera, though I've not used the video side as much. I want to get a little more comfortable with the photo side before I move on to take on that beast. Now, I did take this camera out for a spin for a week to make some real estate photography. I do have to say that it was great. It took some investing in a lens, the Fuji 10 to 24 mil f4, which is wide enough for vlogging, I might add. I will talk about this lens a little more in another video. And when it comes to manual controls, the X-H1 packs a punch, especially when it comes to navigating and controlling the camera. You have full control of the camera without actually having to go into the menus, except for and setting timers for the bracketed exposures. But even with the My Menus turned on or off, it is easy to do everything you need within a few seconds. I love this camera. Too bad I got the a7 III first. And that is to say that there are some definite downsides to this camera. For one, there were a couple of shoots that had gone on and when I was done, some of the files were corrupted. But when I'm on location, I like to take some test shots and then the actual shot to make sure I'm able to nail focus every time. And just to be safe, I have a few shots. Luckily, I had an extra set where the focus was spot on and I was able to submit the shots without having to go back for a reshoot. It may have been the cards I was using, so I swapped out those cards and put in some faster cards and I did not experience any corruption since. Another downside to the camera is that I was unable to figure out whether the X-H1 has redundant shooting. This isn't a deal breaker, but it is something I would like to have when I'm out in the field. Now, I did say earlier that this is the camera that I would have chosen if I did not get the Sony a7 III first. And that is not to say that the a7 III is better than the X-H1. I say this because the a7 III is a safer camera to use. With the redundant memory, I feel much more at ease when on shoots. It is always good to have that second card as a backup. But as I think about it, back when I was using the Canon and the Panasonic, redundant shooting wasn't a thing. So I will always shoot three to four shots of the same photo to make sure I had the shot which is something I do now, but mainly for focus, which is why not having redundant shooting is not a deal breaker. It's always good to have workarounds when using whatever camera you're using. But just as the a7 III, the Fujifilm X-H1 is way more camera than I need for shooting real estate photography, which is always good. And that is to say that I do love this camera and would I recommend it? Yes, and would I purchase it again in a heartbeat, but I would hold out for the X-H2 if that was ever a thing. So yes, I would purchase it again in a heartbeat. Although I would no longer be using this camera on real estate shoots, I will still be using it for other projects that aren't real estate, but more passion projects. And I would definitely be using this camera to shoot some video projects. So keep a lookout for that. And that is it. Thanks for watching. Stay awesome.